Healthy at Home with Bobby Johnson. Hi, everybody, and welcome back for season two. It's Bobby here, and I'm happy to be joining you again. And guess what? You get a little bit more this season, a lot more exercises and some fantastic added bonuses. Some of those bonuses include my fantastic fantastic outfits. I've got some crazy wonderful pants on that are metallic-y stripes on there, so a little bit of fun there. Probably more fun for me than for you, but we will get into the fun for you soon. We also have an interview portion at the end of the show that is full of tips from health and wellness professionals, so make sure to stay tuned for that. You have literally the best seat in the house because guess what? We can do these exercises standing. We can do them seated. Some of them we can do lying down so it's for anyone of any ability to do I have been in the fitness industry for over 20 years now and I am visually impaired I have done a lot of work with people with vision loss and varying disabilities so I look forward to describing these exercises and giving you all kinds of super fun options so you can move along with me Okay, we are ready to get warmed up. And why do we warm up? We warm up to prepare the body for exercise. It gets the blood flowing, it gets the body warm, and it helps to prevent injury. So a proper warm up before any set of exercises or type of exercise you do is very key. So today I'm gonna do this entire warm up seated. So sitting up nice and tall posture is key. So you wanna think of your spine as a stack of Legos a nice straight stack of Legos, <laughs> and your neck is an extension of your spine. So you're sitting up nice and tall, your shoulders are down the back, so just relax them down. Your core is activated, and what I mean is, if I were to come kind of poke you gently in the belly, you can feel that kind of in and up motion, perhaps, that means that your belly is tight, supporting your, your back, your whole core. So it's gonna keep us stable, which is really key for a lot of things we do in daily life. For me, it's really key, especially in the winter or when I'm trying to get around my community in general because my balance is a bit off. So to get started, we are gonna start with basically like an apple picking exercise. So we're going to take your opposite arm and reach it up above your head and slightly to the right or the left to pick apples off of a tree. So your torso is going to rotate slightly to accommodate the movement, but don't think of this as a twist. So my right arm is going to come up and over above my head to pick an apple in front of me and to the left, and it's going to come down, and I'm going to alternate with that left arm over and across, and you're going to pick this up over, across, over, across, over, across, over, and across, over, and over. So I'm switching arms, over, switch, over, switch, over, switch, over, switch. So I'm bringing the arms down and I wanted to teach this one directly up in the air because we're going to bring it in front. So think of these apples that you're picking across your body being at about chest height. So you want to kind of get these shoulders warmed up and is warming up into the back and the arms. So that same motion that you did up and over, you're going to do out front and across. So your right arm comes up across the body and out, pick an apple off the tree and back and you're going to alternate arms. So they're crossing in front of you and switch and switch and switch across and pick across and pick and switch and switch and switch and reach, reach reach so I'm switching each time you hear me say reach or switch it's a different arm so you can go slower switch or faster switch reach and reach and release it down my shoulders are a little bit warmer so I'm going to give you an exercise that's kind of a love hate one <laughs> we're gonna warm up the hands and the wrists and the forearms so I want you to take your arms let's just relax them down at the sides to get proper positioning and I want you to raise them straight out in front of you your palms are facing down relax your elbows just slightly so that your arms aren't locked and super straight relax those shoulders down now I want you to make a fist on each hand so those palms are down and now you've made closed fists like you're gonna punch straight ahead of you but then you're gonna open your hands quite quickly imagine you're flicking water off your fingers so just open them nice and wide and bring them back into fist and open. You're gonna feel this in the wrists, the hands, and the forearms. So we're gonna do this 
fairly quickly. So open, close, 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 open, and release. Okay, now if that gets quite tight, you can do that with your arms hanging down at your sides even. So that's a great way to work the forearms and to warm those up. Now I'm gonna have you march on the spot and you can add some arms. So if you wanna just do arms, it's an alternate arm swing. My right arm goes up to the sky, fingertips to the sky, and then I swing it down at my side. Left arm reaches up to the sky, just above my head and down. And if you don't reach up that high, that is okay. So you can do the alternate arm swings right, left, and if you wanna just kick it up a little bit or change it up, you can add the legs. Now I'm probably gonna get this mixed up. So I'm gonna use my right leg to pick up and take a step like a seated march and my left arm's gonna go up. Opposite arm, opposite leg. So up and up. So I'm marching on the spot with opposite arms. Up, up, up and up. Reach and switch and reach and switch. Let's pick up the pace. Good job. All right, shake that out, grab a drink of water, and I will see you after the break to get into these exercises. Get ready to exercise Healthy at Home with Bobby Jensen. We'll be right back. Let's exercise Healthy at Home with Bobby Jensen is back. Okay, so get ready to work. We are going to exercise the forearms to start. So this isn't necessarily one of my favorite exercise, but it is crucial because it helps strengthen my arms for so many of the things that I do throughout my day and help prevent with wrist injuries and elbow overuse. So using my cane, my right arm has, has its share of trouble, so this really helps strengthen those muscles so I can use my white cane every day. So I'm gonna do all of these things seated and give options for each one except for the forearms. <laughs> you can use weights or no weights. And if you are using weights to train your forearms, you wanna go very, very light, like one pound dumbbells. You can always go heavier as, as you advance, but these muscles fatigue quite easily. So if you find they get tired, you can put your hands down. So we're gonna start, I'm seated on my mat in a cross-legged position so you can get comfortable in your chair, sit nice and tall, good posture, shoulders down the back. I'm gonna start with my hands down at my sides, my palms are facing the outside of my thighs and I'm gonna bring my arms straight up out in front of me, right out of the shoulder joint and they are shoulder distance apart. Now I'm gonna rotate my arms so my palms are facing downwards. I'm gonna make fists. You don't wanna make super, super tight fists because we are working those forearms and when you make a tight fist, that activates those muscles already. So your fists can be a little bit loose. Now what I want you to think of is your entire arm being flat from your elbow all the way to where your knuckles are so that your wrist isn't tilted up, not just yet. <laughs> so I've got a slight bend in my elbows, okay? So they're a little bit soft so they feel somewhat comfortable. Now I'm going to curl my wrists down. Do not move your arms or your elbows. You're just gonna turn down like you're revving up a motorbike and bring it back to that flat position. So I'm curling the wrists down. So my knuckles point down towards the ground, bringing them back up so that my knuckles face forward. And down and back up and down, back up. Remember keeping that wrist flat, not tipping it up yet. Down and back up down and back up and three and up and two and up and one and up so if you need to shake it out put your dumbbells down first if you're using them go ahead and shake them out and we're going to do a second set this reminds me very much my husband rode motorcycle for years so this reminds me very much of him starting it up in the driveway because we could hear the the loud roar which is one of my very favorite sounds so get set up for set number two i'm bringing those arms back straight out in front of me turning them so my palms are facing down Making those gentle fists, my elbows are soft. Get your shoulders into a relaxed position so they're not way up by your ears. And you're going to curl those wrists down and back. So you're curling it down and then bringing those knuckles back to facing forward, curling the knuckles down towards the ground. So it's like a tip of the wrists and back up 
and down, back to straight, down, back to straight, and down, and up, and two more, down, and up, and down, and up. And we're gonna release, we're gonna do a third set. So my left arm is, is feeling this, so make sure you've had enough water to drink during the day and really watch, like I said, that extra tight fist. If you made too tight of a fist, that forearm is gonna be tight and you're gonna get a fantastic cramp in your forearm and those are not fun. So we're setting up for set number three. Bringing those arms up again, palms facing the ground, so they're shoulder distance and shoulder height. Soften those elbows a bit, relax those shoulders, make those gentle fists. Now, if you wanna feel one of your arms to make sure the top of your hand is flat and that your wrist is not flexed up, you can go ahead and do that and check the alignment. Now we're going to tip those knuckles down, so curl the wrist down and back up. And down and back to that flat position. So knuckles go down to the ground, your arms are staying still. And knuckles back facing front and down. And up and down and up and down and up and two more down and up and down and up so release it you can shake it out we're going to reverse this movement so it's going to be the same but we're going to turn the arms and we're going to be curling towards us so you can start off with your arms down at your sides this is where if you're using those light dumbbells you would go ahead and pick them up Bring your arms straight out in front of you, that shoulder distance and shoulder height. This time I'm turning my arms so my palms are facing upward. If you're not already in fist, go ahead and make those gentle fists. So my arm is completely flat on the back side that's facing the ground. And I'm gonna curl the wrists toward me. So, if your shoulders are getting tired, you can drop those arms just an inch or two. Bring those knuckles, curl your wrists towards your face. And the knuckles go back to a flat position knuckles come towards your nose in the wrist curls you're going to feel this on the back side of your arm and back to straight so it's like reverse starting your motorcycle and back and bring it in so just curling those wrists and back and curl and back you've got three more curl and back and in for two give that a squeeze curl it in and back to that neutral position and last one Curl and back. So you can go ahead and place your weights down if you're using them. Otherwise, shake it out because you don't want these forearms to get too tight before our next set. All right. Here we go. Second set. You have got this. So I'm going to take my arms straight out in front and reversing that mo movement from the very first time we did it. So I flipped my palms to face the sky, made those loose fists if I wasn't already holding my dumbbells, and I'm gonna curl those wrists towards me. So it's flexing the wrists inwards towards my face. My arms are staying still and releasing back to that starting position. Bring it in and release, in and release, in and release in and release and three curl it in and release two bring it in and release and last one bring it in and release so if you've never ever done this before this is not the time to start using the dumbbells get your muscles built up just using body weight and you can always add so we are going to move on to the core what does our core do a little bit of everything it's what supports us and allows us to move. So there are different areas to the core. So we're gonna focus on basically training some stability and a little bit into the twisting motion, so it's more to the side. So when you turn to do things in your daily life, to reach, to bend, to grab things, you have that support there and that strength. Because often if we turn, we can tweak our back and I would rather not tweak my back. I don't know about you. So you can do this standing or seated. You can either use a dumbbell or not. I'm going to go ahead without for this first set. So I'm just gonna drop my arms down beside me. My palms are facing my thighs. I'm gonna raise them up in front of me, shoulder height. Now I'm gonna bring my hands together so my palms are together. I'm gonna interlace my fingers. If this is tough on the shoulders, you're gonna lower your arms just a couple inches till it feels a little less stressful on the shoulders because we are working the core, not the shoulders. Now using your core, we are going to rotate to the right. 
So I'm going to turn slightly and my arms are going to go to the right. My body's going to follow using those abdominal muscles. And I'm going to come back to center. I'm going to turn. My arms are guiding me. I'm going to go to the left. And back to center. So you want to do this with control. Otherwise, we're just kind of warming up the core. This should be an actual exercise. So we're going to go to the right. Think of using those core muscles to move you and turn you to the right and bring you back to center. So the core works on both parts of the exercise. We're gonna go to the left, so it's a slight twist to the left, arms are leading, and back to center. To the right. And back to center. To the left. And back to center. We got one more each side. To the right. And back to center, to the left, and back to center. So you can release the arms. We're going to do that again. As you notice, I really emphasize the pause in the center. This gives your spine a chance to reset and a chance for you to really work those muscles instead of just swinging straight through. So we're working on isolating each side of that core. So you're going to bring your arms straight up again out of the shoulder joint, interlace your hands. I'm going to just lower my arms just about an inch because my shoulders are tight. So reaching out in front, your posture is nice and tall and we are going to twist to the right. So let your arms lead, your body follow, your head follows, twisting to the right and back in to the left. And this is only as far as your body allows and back in to the right. And back to center, to the left, and back to center, to the right, and center, to the left. Squeeze those abdominals, squeeze to bring you back to center, and one more time each side. To the right, squeezing that belly, and center, and to the left and center and release. So the size of the movement itself is not important. It's the quality. If you can only twist an inch or two, that's okay. If you're using the muscles to do the work instead of just swinging the arms, that is what we want. So our range of motion varies from person to person. So keep that in mind. For this last set, I'm gonna utilize a dumbbell. So I'm picking up a dumbbell and I'm gonna hold it when I raise my arms I'm holding it on the flat end, so not on the bar itself, so on each of the bell ends. So I'm going to reach my arms out in front of me. I've got a hand holding each of the bell ends of the dumbbell. My elbows are a little bit soft, meaning they're not locked. My arms are not so stiff that they don't allow any movement. Now I'm going to use my abdominals to twist to the right, so my arms are going to the right. My head and my neck follow, and back to center. And a twist to the left using these abdominals and bring it back to center to the right and back to center to the left and back to center and to the right and center to the left, this feels harder with the dumbbell <laughs> to the left and center. And we're gonna go one more each way. To the right, squeezing those abs and center and to the left and center. Okay, I'm gonna do one more set of these. You can do the same as we head into the break. More exercises are coming up. Keep moving. Healthy at Home with Bobby Jansen. We'll be right back. Back to the exercises on Healthy at Home with Bobby Jansen. So from here, this can be done seated. I'm going to do a crunch. And what you can do is do the upper body motion, even standing in a chair. I'm going to teach this from on the floor, but feel free to do to follow along with the upper body portion and I will cue you through. So I'm going to come to lying on my mat. If you want to do this seated, just remain seated. 
Okay. So I'm lying flat on my back. My knees are bent. The soles of my feet are on the floor, flat on the floor. My legs are about hip distance apart. So my knees are in line with my hips. You're gonna imagine your body melting in towards the mat. If you're seated, think of sitting up nice and tall. And when I say melting your body along the mat, if you're lying down or along the floor, it just means you don't want a large arch in your lower back. So you just wanna think of it relaxing. I'm gonna take my hands behind my head and put my thumbs underneath that bone. There's a bone that kind of sticks out at the back of your skull and that's your occipital bone. You want your thumbs under there. And this is not a head pull. We're working the abdominal muscles. So keep that in mind. And I want you to keep your elbows out. And if this is really tough to have your arms up to this degree, if you're doing the seated crunch, you can have your fingers on your shoulders. So your elbows are still open, but your hands are on your shoulders instead of behind your head. Now I'm going to nod my chin to my chest as if I've got a big juicy orange. My, my little grandson, he loves oranges, these big juicy, I think they're navel oranges, he loves those. So I'm gonna imagine there's an orange between my chin and my chest. So it's a slight chin tilt down. And I am going to curl my upper body just a few inches up off the ground, or if you're seated, you're going to crunch forward slightly. So using your stomach, don't pull your head. You're going to raise those shoulder blades up off the mat. Bring Your nose is going to start to point towards your knees or towards the wall in front of you and lower back down. Most people like to hold their breath in these. Please do not hold your breath. It does not make it any easier. And again, and crunch, bringing it up. Keep those elbows open, 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 and back down. And crunch up and back down. Using the core muscles, your upper belly, crunch and back down. And squeeze, roll those shoulder blades up off the mat, lower them back down. You rest your head on the mat, just, just gonna touch. And up and back down. And we got three more. Bringing those shoulder blades up, keep those elbows open and back down. And two more. And we're gonna crunch and back down. And one more. Crunch and back down. So if you are feeling this a lot in the neck, you are pulling. More than likely that is what's happening. So a good way to feel this is I like to take my finger and I'm gonna just between my where my ribs end and your belly kind of starts. These are your upper abdominal area that you're gonna be focusing. This kind of is what's going to crunch you, curl you. So you can put a finger there to see if they're, if they're kicking in and they're working the way you want them to. Sometimes just having that finger there acts as a cue and then you can go back to your exercises. So if I were to crunch up, yeah, okay, they are there. That's what I want working. Let's go into our second set, hands behind the head. Remember not to pull, elbows stay open. Drop that chin down slightly like you've got your orange and lift the shoulder blades up. So using your stomach to curl upwards, your nose is pointing towards that wall in front of you or the knees and back down. If you're doing this seated, your nose is gonna be pointing a little bit more to the floor somewhere in front of you and crunch and down. And bring it up and down. And up and down. And we're at our halfway, curl it up, bring it down. You have four more. Curl and back down. I'm not letting the abs go completely on the down. I'm still maintaining some of a hold. Curl up and down. We got, I think two more. I like these so much, sometimes I lose count. And up and down. Oh, one more. And down. I'm going to release my hands. You can kind of wiggle your shoulders around. Give your, your body just a little wiggle before you reset it back for the third and last set. So if you're finding that you are struggling, you either drop your sets or your reps. What that means is instead of doing three sets of eight, you can do three sets of five or six, or you can do two sets. We want to build strength, not cause pain or discomfort. 
So taking those hands behind the head, you're gonna engage that core. So make sure you're using your belly to support you. Elbows open, crunch up and back down. Crunch up and back down. Crunch up and back down and up and back down. This is our halfway point on this curl and crunch and lower. Four more. Elbows open and lower and crunch and lower. They're like butterfly wings out to the side and crunch and lower. We've got two left and crunch and lower and crunch and lower all right you can let that go so there's a very big difference between a crunch and a sit up it's just a partial curl so i'm going to rule to my side to come up because i'm going to talk you through what we have next so we're going to do toe taps which can be done seated but i'm going to give you an upper body option sometimes our lower because it targets the lower abdominals and they take they take some developing and if we don't have the mobility in there we can always add arms and i'm going to be honest some people really hate this exercise so we're giving you some option here which is lots of fun so it's going to be an alternating shoulder tap instead of a toe tap so i want you to still think of that core you just worked it you know where it is you know what's going on there so you're going to sit up nice and tall you're going to take your arms out to the sides straight out of the shoulder joints and I'm simply going to tap the opposite shoulder. So I, my right arm, I'm just gonna bend at the elbow and tap across my body to the left shoulder. So just tapping myself on the shoulder and bringing it back open. Left hand goes to the right shoulder and back open. And I want you to do this with control. This isn't about speed and mobility, it's about control of the abdominals. Right fingertips, left shoulder, back open. Imagine you're going through thick oatmeal or thick soup to do this left hand to right shoulder and your head can follow. It gives you a little bit of a torso rotation and open. Okay, so that is your modification for toe taps. You can stick with that one or you can join me on the floor. Now, if you're doing this in a chair, you have to be careful. You're gonna scooch slightly forward and lean back. I'll explain as we go further. So I'm on the floor and this is going to be a strange thing, but I cue it for everyone. I need to have contact with the mat. My butt will just wiggle around on the mat and then I don't have as much stability. So I cue taking the flesh off the bone. So all that means is just moving your butt cheeks just a little bit so you have more contact with the mat so you don't feel as wiggly. You feel more stable. Can you do that sitting? Yes. Is it weird? Absolutely, but it helps. So my knees are bent, my feet are flat on the floor. I'm sitting up nice and tall. Now I'm simply going to lean back. My hands are just on my legs just for support or you can have them on the mat beside you and I'm simply gonna lean back. You're gonna feel that core work. If you're feeling your back work too much, you've gone too far back. So this might be enough for you and that's okay. Otherwise, I'm going to simply, simply, that sounds funny because this is tough, raise my right foot up off the mat so my shin is parallel to the floor and I'm gonna tap that foot down. You're gonna think of your stomach helping you do this, not your legs. And left foot up, shin parallel with the floor, put that foot down. So you can either continue with those alternate shoulder taps or we're gonna work these toe taps. So I'm gonna place my fingertips on the floor and I'm gonna raise one foot, tap it down. Raise the other foot, tap it down. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Raise it up, bring it down. We got one more each side, <laughs> up. Bring it down, up and bring it down. So shake it out whether you're doing the upper body or the lower abdominal portion, you're still working your core. And if this is too easy, should we just give you a little more? Why not? Okay, so <laughs> we're going to raise both feet off the mat. So I'm in that seated position. I'm making sure that flesh is just off the bone so I have contact. I'm gonna with that mat so that my butt's not wiggling everywhere and I'm sliding. I'm gonna lean back just slightly. I'm gonna put my hands on the floor. 
So just beside you, just in front of your hips or beside your hips, this is simply for support. So however that feels good. Now I'm gonna pick up one foot off the floor so my shin is parallel. And remember, you can go right into those alternating arm taps. Now I'm gonna lean back just a time. Well, my abs are shaking. <laughs> a little bit further, I'm gonna raise both legs up and I'm gonna tap, bring it back. So my legs are parallel with the mat underneath me and they're both raised. And you guys are gonna see me shaking. <laughs> and I'm gonna lower and raise. So alternating toe taps and raise and lower and raise and lower and raise. So I'm tapping that toe down, bringing it back up, tapping that toe down, bringing it back up, tapping that toe down, bringing it back up, tapping it down, bringing it up. And last one, tapping it down, bringing it up and you can release. Holding your breath is going to do you no good here because if we don't have that breath moving, we're not getting through the exercise. So last and final set. We're going to do just add one more element. So in a chair, you can do that alternate tap, shoulder tap with your toes raised off the ground or off the chair. Otherwise, we're going to lean back, raise those feet, or you can do the single tap still from the ground raising up. And if you want, you can take your hands off the mat and I'm going to tap a foot down and bring it up and down. And if this is the one that I shake the most, <laughs> down and back up, tap one foot down, bring it back up, shins parallel with the mat, and down and up. And I'm gonna put my hands down so I don't fall back. <laughs> and down and back up, and down and back up, and one more, down and back up. So I'm gonna come back to a seated position. Great job, that was tough. Grab a drink and I'll see you soon for the cool down. Keep moving, healthy at home with Bobby Johnson. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Healthy at Home with Bobby Johnson. Okay, so we are going to go through a cool down. It's gonna stretch out the body, allow it to repair, and it's gonna slow down your heart rate and allow you to go about your day feeling more relaxed. So one of the biggest things is we often hold we're, we're holding those poses, especially that toe tap or those alternating shoulder taps. It can create a lot of upper body tension. So we're going to let that go. And it just kind of lets the stress of the day go. I'm going to do this entire cool down in a seated position. So you can do this seated on the chair or I'm currently cross-legged on the floor. I'm going to have my hands, my hands are just resting on my thighs. My legs are in a cross-legged position as I tell, told my kids when they were little crisscross applesauce. So I'm in that, that nice cross leg position. I'm sitting up nice and tall. I'm gonna relax my shoulders down the back because this, this is the great part. You've done all the hard work. We are going to do head nods. So we're gonna nod our chin towards our chest so you can feel that stretch through the neck and in through the upper back. And you're gonna bring your head back up to that original position. Now you're gently going to look up. So imagine you're gently looking up towards the sky, bringing your chin upwards towards the ceiling. You don't want to force this movement. You just want to get a stretch in the front of the neck or in the throat. Head is back to center, chin to chest. This is usually the one that people like the most is the chin to chest one. <laughs> Bring it back up to center. You're going to look up to the sky gently and we're going to finish. Bring it back to center. We're going to finish with that chin to the chest because it seems to be everybody's favorite. Well, end on that one so dropping that chin down to the chest and take some deep breaths here imagine breathing all the way into your your back you can feel it in the back rib cage nice deep easy breaths and bring your head back to center very nice so this next one is a variation on a forward fold if you're doing this from a chair you're going to not do this this butterfly position of the legs so you're, Stick with me for the hip hinging portion. If you are on the floor, I want you to extend your legs straight out in front of me, in front of you. I'm putting mine out in front of me and you're going to let your legs roll open. So your feet are going to flop open to the side. Now you're going to bring your knees in towards you. So you're going to put the soles of your feet together and draw your knees out to the sides so like the wings of a butterfly and allow those to fall open. If you're in a chair, this is where you're going to join us for the hip hinge. So we're going to hinge at the hips and walk your hands down your legs or walk your hands forward on the floor. You want to get a good stretch here. Your back is nice and long and if it feels good, you can go ahead and completely relax. Let your head go, your neck go, 
and truly enjoy the stretch, I'm going to hang out here. But what I'd like you guys to do is stay moving, stay motivated, and stay with us for more health and wellness tips. Healthy at Home with Bobby Jansen will be right back. We're back with health and wellness tips on Healthy at Home with Bobby Jansen. It's a gorgeous sunny day. We are outside. Um, I am on top, I'm sitting on top of a drum. I'm kneeling down here, enjoying this gorgeous weather with Jade. Jade's gonna teach us a little bit about playing with rhythm and how it can benefit our whole self. Jade, can you tell us a little bit about what we're gonna experience today? Yes, I can. So we have uh, like, Bobby has mentioned we are sitting on top of the of a West African style djembe drum but you don't have to have a fancy drum to be able to play and have fun with rhythm and experience the many benefits of rhythm play. We also have in front of us a few different instruments like shakers and I'm just grabbing one up off the blanket. Ooh, cool. And there's so many <laughs> things around the house even that can substitute for instruments. Two silver uh, tablespoons back to back mm. playing the spoons. Mm, and bet. playing the bones was also very popular. And a lot of these things evolved from back in the day when people would sit around the fire and share stories. And often the stories turned into music and song. And it was a way to tell the stories because rhythm was a part of everyday life. The rhythms of the seasons, the rhythms of the day, we lived more in rhythm. And so to stay in balance and in well-being, it really behooves us to give some consideration to playing with rhythm and bringing rhythm consciously back into our lives. And we can do that in so many ways, including even on our bodies. So for example, if you wanted to try this with me, oh, just yes. take your right hand and we're going to be just bringing it down and patting right in the center of our chest, like over our heart. And just close your eyes and let everything rest and just feel into what it feels like to just pat your own chest. You can hear it, you can feel it. And it's also doing something else. When we do this in the middle of our chest, we're also stimulating our thymus. So just like a gorilla beats his chest to wake himself up, to get ready to go do, get a surge of energy and do what he needs to do, we are doing that right now by patting our thymus. Rhythm can, version of coffee. The rhythm version of coffee, there it is. <laughs> and so rhythm play can be anything as simple as snapping off fingers, Snap fingers. if you can do that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Now, some people have trouble snapping their fingers. Well, that's okay, because guess what? If what? you do have two hands, you can always. And we can just have a little conversation even. <laughs> we don't have to do the same thing. Okay, good, because <laughs> I think my rhythm's a little out of whack. And when we get lost, there's always the bass beat to come back to, no matter what we're doing, if we're playing with somebody else, coming back to the simplest heartbeat. And once you've listened, and you feel it and you feel like you're in rhythm, that's where now we can explore and have a little play. Oh, well, that's a different sound. If you wanna join me. I think I will. With so anything? I, with anything. Okay. Now, how does this Let's say affect my stress levels. Hmm. Well, what it does is it kind of tricks our brain into getting our mind off of other things and brings the focus into the present moment. Our auditory is engaged, different parts of our brain are engaged, and we can start letting go of the things that were maybe troubling us. We can also just alleviate some stress by... Okay, that's a little bit of fun. ...giving ourselves permission <laughs> to make some noise. Now, that was a little bit about different ways we can play with rhythm with our body, clapping, snapping, patting our thighs. Okay. All of that is rhythm play. And anything that we can do on our body, we can also do if we happen to have a drum or let's say a Culligan water bottle that's empty at home. Those are fantastic to play around with sound and rhythm. So think of it like a buffet of sound and that you can sample 
anything on that table and see how things combine, just like cooking. How does this go together? Now in a drum circle, we kind of consider the drums the meat and potatoes very cool and then leaving space for others to play if you are playing with others but even also if you're playing by yourself giving yourself permission to not have to fill every little bit and creating some space in your brain creating some space in your life in your bubble in your being giving ourselves the opportunity to maybe slow down or to maybe get something out sometimes just a good healthy rumble <laughs> can that be a good weird. outlet because of these tensions and stress they build up in us and they do need an outlet mm -hmm. and if we can give them a healthy conscious outlet we're not going to maybe be so inclined to lose it in our car or on our with our kids or our spouse or partner or friend you know um, our fuses might be a little bit more calm down so why don't we just do a big rumble to get rid of any pent-up energy that we've hey, got on the drum here on the drum okay. with our hands in the center of the drum letting them just bounce off we're just gonna do go ahead and let it out and then we can soften and we can soften to the point like well that's relaxing we can even start off like it's a wind Okay, so I'm going to rub my hands over the surface. Yes. Running our hands over the okay. skin of the drum and just listening. Becoming the wind. Now if I have, I am prone to injury. Mm -hmm. um, and, or if I have like some mobility, can I, can I just use one hand? Can I use one foot? Can Absolutely. I... You can adapt okay. it to suit your needs. Absolutely. You can find some other surface that might sound interesting to rub your hand on corduroy or Ooh. you know playing with sound and texture and rhythm it's wide open so let's just end with a gentle rain okay just tap my fingers just tapping your fingers okay. and imagining what a gentle rain might sound like I love I do love the sound of the rain absolutely and you can imagine if there's 20 people doing this it's pretty interesting oh that would be beautiful yeah and then the rains get a little harder <laughs> and a little harder and a little harder And then the rains slow down and slow down and it goes back to a gentle breeze and then it comes to stillness once again and the most powerful place with the sound is in the silence and the stillness that we create. I've learned an awful lot, Jade. Thank you so much for sharing this with me and allowing me to feel and touch and, and hear and kind of get in touch with some, some different ways to relieve my stress. It's been a pleasure. And uh, permission to play, giving ourselves permission to play is all we need to do. I love it. Thank you. Thanks. Produced by Honeycut Studios. Host, Bobby Jansen. Narrator, Charlene Young. Accessibility Consultant, Sierra Roth. Integrated Describe Video Consultant, M. Williams. Content Development Specialist, Jim Crisco. Supervising Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Manager, Programming, Lizanne Gagné. Director, Content Development and Production, Kara Nye. VP, Content Development and Operations, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2023 Accessible Media Inc. NAMI Original Production.